I'm going to tell you about something in women's health that bugs the crap out of me. <laughs> hey, I'm Dr. Patty Barch. I'm a traditional naturopath, founder and owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness and NaturallyUnbridled.com, where we focus on wellness solutions, not disease management. This is Down the Ridge with Dr. Patty, where I give you seven to 10 minutes of holistic life and wellness information on my way to work. This is not medical advice. It's for entertainment purposes. Only nothing I say is true. Do not listen to me. For those of you who don't know, I have an interesting path that I followed to get to where I am today as a naturopath. But my career started in the biotechnology industry. I did cancer research for eight years. So eight years in cancer research, four years in animal nutrition, seven years in education, and then the rest along the way as a naturopath. So something happened in the gap between eight years of cancer research and becoming a naturopath. Because as I was, you know, delving deeper into the naturopath journey and starting to work with clients, I started to hear this phrase that I had never heard in eight years of cancer research. And that was stage zero cancer. It's not a thing. <laughs> They created stage zero cancer to basically say, before your cranky cells turn into cancer, we will treat you for cancer. And this infuriates me because stage zero cancer means, okay, circling back a little bit. Um, Cancer has been staged forever as one, two, three, and four, with one being very localized, not involving other tissues, um, and in all reality, your body can you know, recover from all of these things, but easy, more easily from stage one. Um, and then stage four is metastatic cancer, which means it's spread throughout the body, okay? And then different phases in between. Stage zero cancer means this could become cancer. And the standard of care, which I've done videos about the standard of care, which is created by organizations that are funded by the industry. I mean, here we go again. Um, they created stage zero cancer so that they can treat you for a disease that they haven't, that you haven't really developed. Um, and we're seeing this prophylactic treatment across the board where they take someone who has a blood sugar imbalance and they put them on a cholesterol medication because statistically someone with a blood sugar imbalance um, will over time need cholesterol medication. So they put them on it before they actually need it, which has detrimental effects. Um, standard of care is the protocol in which the doctors must follow in order to prevent being sued for malpractice. So if the standard of care for, for stage zero cancer is to recommend double mastectomy, chemo, and radiation, um, then the doctor must recommend that or if down the road you don't do the things to help your body to heal um, and your cancer develops and spreads and your doctor hadn't recommended the double mastectomy, chemo, and radiation, um, then you could sue that doctor for malpractice. So they constantly recommend the standard of care. Um, they also do this thing that drives me crazy, which is um, when they identify calcifications um, in the breast, they wanna do a biopsy there, and then when they do the biopsy, they want to leave behind a titanium marker. Calcifications can happen for different reasons. It doesn't always mean cancer. Um, a common thing could be um, from a old breast injury. So I know like when I was in middle school playing softball, I got hit in the chest hard with a line drive. 
Um, that can definitely damage the tissue. Scar tissue can develop and a little bit of calcifications. I used to play soccer, um, co-ed adult soccer, and you could get elbowed in the chest. That used to happen pretty regularly. Um, those injuries to the chest, to the breast, can cause some changes in the tissues that can have some calcifications there. Calcification does not mean cancer. So, and you know, I, I'm a middle-aged woman. I've had my own um, scares, you know, so to speak. I've talked about this before. I've had different lumps and bumps and cysts and I've been monitoring with thermography and then um, on some occasions I've gone as far as having ultrasound done. Um, to just make sure, like, you know, this this is concerning, right? So the, the thing that, there's so many things about it that bother me, but um, I have had clients who are super holistic. They don't want to take any medications. They um, eat healthy diet. They drink water. They drink exercise. I mean, sorry, they drink, they drink water. They exercise. They have a good social circle. They um, participate in some sort of spiritual um, practice. And, um, you know, these are healthy people. And um, as is common, especially in middle-aged women who are having horm massive hormone fluctuations, the changes in the breast tissue can lead to lumps and bumps. And so um, being prudent, if a lump or bump shows up, somebody will go and have further testing. They might come have thermography testing. They might go have a mammogram, ultrasound, breast MRI, something to try to investigate. Is this lump or bump something that I should be concerned about? And I've had these holistic minded clients um, get told they have stage zero cancer. We need to get you into surgery as, as soon as possible. And so the problem with that is um, there is a diagnosis trauma, right? If somebody says those words to you, you immediately go into fight or flight. You may already have been in fight or flight being afraid that you're going to hear those words. There are physiological changes in the brain that happen when you are in fight or flight because we are animals. The fight or flight response is a survival response, which means the logical, critical, let me think about this part of the brain shuts down. Because if you're in a survival situation, you don't have time to analyze. You need to run for your life or fight for your life. So that reptilian amygdala part of the brain that is survival, that is run for your life or fight for your life, that takes over. So there's a strategy to get you out of your frontal lobe, that logical, critical, analytical part of your brain that's going, okay, slow your roll. Um, there, there's probably no need to go into surgery tomorrow for something that is localized and, you know, stage zero, again, not cancer yet. Um, but they keep, they put you into fight or flight so that you don't think and you act and you run and you're like, which animal is running the fastest? I'm going to follow that one. And, um, you know, that's how we end up making medical decisions, um, that are against who we are as a person because they have overridden our analytical brain. So slow your roll, take a beat, take a breath, consult with other people who have knowledge and experience look into what sorts of things you can do to get your body to heal um, off the top of my head besides detoxification and nourishing we are looking at things like hyperbaric oxygen IV vitamin C um, getting your vitamin D levels checked, iodine supplementation, melatonin supplementation, a ketogenic diet, getting the stress out of your life, turning off the news. <laughs> um, you know, there are lots of things we can do to help restore our body to balance before we permanently alter or poison the body. That being said, I have no judgment against any woman who has gone full speed ahead down the medical model road because I understand what it's like 
to think you have cancer, believe you have cancer. You know, I haven't had cancer, but I've been in situations where I was pretty sure I thought I did. Um, and I, th this is, this video is not about what those women did being wrong because it was right for them. And I don't hold that against them ever. People have to do what's right for them at all times. But if you're in a situation where you have concerns about what might be going on in your body, take a beat, take a breath, and um, maybe map out a plan of things that you could do that might be alternative to the one um, path that you're being shown. Okay, peace out, peeps. Have a healthy day.